the most unusual planet in our solar system. So let's talk about this unusual ice giant and welcome to What The Math. So Uranus is one of those planets we don't really hear about very often unless someone is trying to make a joke because of the name and you know what I'm talking about and if you don't well good it's better if you don't anyway today we're going to be using universe in box to talk about this very unusual planet named Uranus and notice how I pronounce it differently from what you may have heard and that's because the actual name is after the Greek god by the name of Uranus and so in English usually his name is pronounced as Uranus not Uranus now, oh, anyway, we're not going to be talking about this, though. We are going to be talking about some very unusual facts about this really unusual, very unique planet. And we're actually going to talk about the 2017 discovery um, about its magnetosphere as well. So let's actually start by exploring what is it so unusual about this blue giant. I'm actually going to go in here and add some of its moons as well, or I guess all of its moons. We can click this button right here, and this will add all of the moons at the same time. Now, first is, well, as I mentioned before, the name is after the Greek god, but the names of the moons here are actually after characters in various uh, books. And specifically here, it's the um, books of Alexander Pope and William Shakespeare. Like, for example, Oberon, Titania, Miranda, all of those were characters in those books. Um, in comparison, Jupiter, for example, has its moons named after the lovers of Zeus. So the names of moons there is slightly different from the names of moons here. Uh, there is currently approximately, or I guess not approximately, but exactly 27 moons that are known to us, although we may have not discovered all of them because only one spacecraft ever visited this planet, and that's Voyager 2. Uh, Voyager 2 is already quite far away in the outer solar system and back in, in the 70s or I believe it was early 80s it got to visit Uranus and take a few picture pictures and those are the only photos we actually have of it except for the ones from Hubble telescope that took some later as well. We also know that Uranus has 13 rings which are not actually portrayed here so we're going to add them manually. We're going to go in here and add the rings of Uranus to our Uranus. So you can kind of maybe not see them very well, but there is a bit of a ring right here. It's a very, very thin ring. And there's like 13 of them. They're really difficult to see, but we were able to see them both with Voyager and Hubble telescope years ago. Now, originally this planet was actually discovered back in 1781 by Willem Herschel, and he thought it was a comet, but then he realized it was a planet and decided to name it after King George III. So the actual original name of this planet was supposed to be not Uranus at all, but a very silly name, Georgian Sidus. And that basically means Star of George. So he was going to name this after the King of England, but he had to name it Uranus because all of the planets had to be named after Greek or Roman characters, specifically gods. Anyway, so that's not really that important. So let's actually just talk about the scientific facts here. And um, one really interesting thing about Uranus is that, as you may see here, it actually spins on its side compared to other planets. All of the planets in our solar system spin on the plane um, of solar rotation, basically this way. Uranus, on the other hand, spins that way. It's basically on its side, it's about 98 degree uh, tilt here. And so every 42 years, only this side receives the sun, and then the other 42 years, the other side receives the sun. So there's basically a very strange and unusual day on this planet. There's no sunrise, there's no sunset. It basically kind of just spins here, and the sun is always in there. And uh, the year here is basically a day long, and one single year is 84 years, um, years long. And so it's a very unusually incomprehensible season to us. Basically, here the sun is always in the skies and the seasons are very, very dramatically different from the ones on Earth. And the reason for this particular unusual rotation is very likely because a long time ago, Uranus may have received a collision from an Earth-sized planet. So something like this happened. We think that's maybe why it spins that way. 
and this is what may have happened. You're about to witness it. Here we go. And because of this collision, a lot of other things may have occurred as well, which uh, may be responsible for its unusual magnetosphere as well, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. So there's that collision. And because the mass of Uranus is only about 14 and a half masses of Earth, now it's 15 and a half because we just collided Earth with it, um, it very likely got tilted on the side and started spinning that way. So that's so far the best explanation we have. And now we actually have it really, really hot because it received this collision. So um, interestingly, this is actually known as an ice giant, not a gas giant, because even though it has hydrogen and helium in the upper parts of the atmosphere, on the inside, inside of all of this is basically what we would call ices. So these are things like ammonia, uh, things like water, and things like methane. And this is why this planet is actually kind of blue. So here is what it really looks like. And there's actually a simulation with all of the rings in there as well. So this is what Uranus really kind of looks like. And on top of its unusual color, we also know that it's not a very dense planet. It's actually the second least dense planet after Saturn. And the total density here is only about 1.27 grams per centimeter cube. If you remember anything about water, the density of water is one grams per centimeter cube and the density of Earth is like five and a half. So it's about four times less dense than Earth. If this planet was as dense as Earth, this is how small it would get. So let's actually just go in here and uh, fix its mass and change its density to density that's similar to Earth. And look how smaller it became. So in other words, it's really very unusually airy, very uh, puffed up. So it's very not dense for a lack of better word here. And um, we actually got to witness all of this back in 1986 when Voyager 2, the probe that is basically far, far away now, but here it is flying past Uranus and taking these incredible photos that we later got to witness, but basically flew by Uranus took some readings, studied its magnetosphere for a little bit, and then flew away into the outer solar system. Back then I was really, really young, so I don't remember any of this, but uh, something that I hope we do again. And so basically scientists in 2017 proposed another mission to Uranus because they want to go back and study it. And the reason for this is really important. For the most part, most of the exoplanets we've discovered in our solar system seem to be actually Neptune and Uranus-like. They seem to be basically ice giants. And studying them would help us understand what other planets in other uh, solar systems are like and what we can expect if we are actually go and explore them. And one of those things that we need to study, of course, is why this planet is so cold. This is, a, as a matter of fact, the coldest planet in our solar system with a temperature of like minus 224 degrees Celsius. And it's probably so cold because of the atmospheric composition and also its unusual um, atmosphere in the upper part that basically makes it very hazy and is mostly made up of methane. But we think that, that on the inside, inside of this planet, is actually probably some kind of a a uh, very heavy core, maybe even as much as 55% mass of Earth. So there might be actually a terrestrial planet on the inside underneath all of this gas. But what's unusual about this planet in comparison to Neptune, which I'm going to place here for a comparison as well, is that unlike Neptune, Uranus doesn't seem to actually produce that much um, heat. So the interesting thing about Neptune is that it produces about two 0.6 times more heat by itself from the inside than it actually receives from the sun. Uranus doesn't. Uranus is actually very, very cold. And they're about to collide because I didn't really put them far enough, unfortunately. So why is it that Uranus is so cold and Neptune is so warm? Well, this is something we need to study and this is why we want to send probes there sometime in the next few 10 to maybe 20 years. But one of the explanations for this lack of temperature is that because of that collision that you saw earlier with the Earth-like planet, it's possible that all of the internal heat escaped during that collision. And that's why Uranus got to cool down so much and became much cooler than Neptune. And I think I'm about to lose all of my moons here. Yeah, because we actually increased the mass of the planet due to the collision with Neptune, we're now basically losing all our moons. Oh, and look at how they actually got destroyed. 
They all came really close to Uranus and turned into these very interesting particles. Now they're going to actually create rings. And this is how the rings of Uranus were formed. Comets from the Oort Cloud and from the other regions of, of Kuiper Belt approached Uranus really closely and created these rings that it currently has, 13 of them specifically. And we believe that they were created by the comets that were in that region in comparison to asteroids that created the rings of Jupiter and Saturn. So the main difference between rings of Uranus and rings of Saturn and Jupiter is that Uranus has very icy rings, whereas Jupiter and Saturn have very rocky rings. And this is probably because they were created from different materials. But let's actually go back to the original Uranus and talk about one thing that, that is kind of important here. And hopefully I can show it to you visually by enabling the magnetosphere. So we've discovered it very recently that its magnetosphere is also just as weird as the rest of the planet. And even though it doesn't look like that in Universe Sandbox, in reality, it's actually very unusual. So first of all, it's tilted by about 50 something, 54, I believe, degrees in comparison to the actual rotation. Even though for most planets, usually magnetosphere and the axis of rotations is sort of in the same region. For Uranus, it's totally off. It's like, so if it's rotating this way, this is kind of how the magnetosphere rotates. And this is probably because the magnetosphere inside ice giants is created on the surface because of something that spins on the inside, most likely the uh, metallic hydrogen. And we think that it's tilted so much because there's something blocking it on the inside. And one of the propositions was actually that there might be actually a very unusual ocean of diamonds, literally liquid diamonds that are not uh, conductive of electricity and are blocking the magnetosphere from escaping, thus creating this unusual 50 something degree uh, rotation of axes here. But on top of that, because it spins this way and because the magnetosphere spins this way, every Uranus day, or basically every time it rotates once around its axis, uh, so which is I think about 17 hours, I believe. Yeah, 17.2 hours. Uh, the magnetosphere actually kind of decreases in size and kind of opens up. So basically every 17 hours, it kind of does something that may look like this. It closes down and then it opens up again, which is something that doesn't really happen on other planets at all. Planets that have magnetosphere seem to have it very relatively stable, especially our Earth, actually. And so NASA scientists currently are trying to figure out why this is happening. For this reason, they actually want to revisit Uranus and study this in more detail because studying magnetosphere is very important for the reasons of us needing it to survive. And if we ever want to actually settle on planets like Mars, we need to find a way to create magnetosphere there. So studying it on Uranus and fi figuring out how it's made there and why it changes so much would help us understand how to create it on planets like Mars as well. And so that's really all I kind of wanted to mention in this video and kind of give you an idea of how weird and how unusual Uranus is and how this new discovery of its unusual magnetosphere tells us that, well, basically, that this magnetosphere does a lot of this, which is something that we don't really see anywhere else in our solar system. Anyway, hopefully you learned something from this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space stuff and wants to learn through video games, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back to tomorrow to learn something else, educational, and something about space, or maybe something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Let's finish this by exploring Uranus and space out. And as always, bye-bye. Whoa, that was a very unimpressive explosion. I didn't actually think it would just kind of poof away. But it did uh, seem to affect its moons quite dramatically, making them totally molten bowls of lava. That is very unusual.